G'day everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Life Off-Road. This week we are stuck in lockdown down here in Melbourne and conditions in Victoria are definitely challenging. But we're not going to let you down. We're going back to revisit one of the toughest tracks we've ever done, the Monkey Gum Fire Trail in New South Wales. Get ready to lift some wheels, this is going to be fun. The Monkey Gum Fire Trail is the toughest track in the area, and it's the sort of experience you want to share with mates. I've got a few along for this adventure, including our trip leader and one of my best mates, Danny. We've been led to the start of Mint Bush Trail. I'm very excited, really looking forward to it. Mint Bush Trail leads us down to the bottom, to the creek, where it jumps across, goes up to Monkey Gum, the most fun track of the trip. It's probably the hardest, plenty of different options though, and a beautiful lookout at the top. This morning got going at a reasonable time again. We actually got local crew. We got Simon, Aaron and Tamara. They've come down in two vehicles and they're just showing us around the local tracks. Simon put us in contact with the, the producer and said, yeah, well, we're actually down at Yale, so come down and have a trip and we'll have a chat and whatever else. That's how we got on board. Never travelled through this area. I've heard about it a lot, but haven't really travelled down here. Good to have a bit of local knowledge with you. Like always, it's the usual crew. We've got Alan Barb from Piranha. They're along for another one, they wouldn't miss it. Mick, and of course the trip wouldn't carry on if it was for Mick, because everyone had to cook for themselves. We've got Danny, he's back and it's awesome to have him, and he's once again organised as he does all his trips, another epic, epic trip. But we've also got some fresh faces as well. The new guys from Piranha that have come along, and that's Grant and his son. They're pretty new to the full driving scene. And then we've got Rob who at the other end of the spectrum is incredibly experienced. He's from ARB and he's in this mighty Sandy 76 Land Cruiser. The envy of most, I love that thing. All up, the group's sensational. Simon and Shumin are here. And of course, you can't forget the camera crew. They're always good fun too, so we're having a blast. So we started the track at Mintbush Track, which was absolutely sensational. It was a downhill rock crawl all the way down with a couple of local guides that came out who really knew the area and said to us, look guys, it's going to be a ripper. We thought, let's see what a ripper is. I can tell you it's probably one of the best tracks I've done. This is just about to turn onto the start of Monkey Gum, which is what we've been waiting for. Good little drive. All right, bring it on. Got on the road. We were told it was going to be an interesting day for the guys and they said, oh, you know, this track will be a good track. Good track is an understatement. Loved it. First time I've done any serious four-wheel driving. Bit intimidating, but knowing I'm with capable people, got a well-equipped vehicle, got the right setup, it's good to actually push and learn what the limits are. People can New South Wales and say there's no good four-wheel driving. A load of rubbish. There's some amazing forward driving, it's just incredible. So yeah, having a great time, I'm looking forward to a lot more. So it was really good to see all the different vehicles and the way they tackled the terrain, from the coil sprung trucks to the leaf sprung trucks. There was some really, really mad wheel lifts. It was one of those tracks where you wanted a spotter. In actual fact, you were nearly begging for a spotter at times. Simon did a fantastic job getting us up a lot of the really, really hard stuff. Aaron was leading the pack, spotting away and getting people that weren't even with us up the side of the track. You want to get in a car that does some rough stuff? <laughs> oh, he's done damage. Gotta love it, man. More battle damage, the better. This is why Side these cars step. are tough. We don't take chicken tracks. Right 
The rock steps were quite good. A little bit daunting first off because obviously you don't know how the rubber's going to traction on the rock because there's a lot of sand over it. I was running around 24 psi and it just gave a big enough footprint, plenty of grip there, felt safe the whole time, as long as you had that traction underfoot. We were lucky enough to drive through here just prior to the horrific fires that devastated the entire region. Fortunately, the trail is now open again and remains just as challenging. We are only a fraction of a way through it though, so hang around as the rocks get bigger, the ruts get deeper and the trail gets even tougher. Extremely busy track, in actual fact, I'm glad everyone was going up it because if you'd met a few cars coming down it, it would have been challenging. We met a heap of people on the track, it is very, very popular and many of them were very, very, very stuck. So be aware, this is not a track for the uninitiated or for the newbies, it's a bit of a tough one. Yep. Turn, turn, turn! No, 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 no. Hey, stop, stop. hey, 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 buddy, buddy, when he says turn, you need to listen. I definitely wouldn't do those tracks on my own. And I think you'd need a fairly well set up vehicle with a good set of tyres and a bit of ground clearance and a couple of people around just in case it doesn't go all to plan. Watch the finger, turn. Oh, you'll probably want that back. It's a ripper track. There's just rock after rocks, little boulders and rutted tracks, and it's flexing your vehicles all the way. It's awesome to watch. Do you know how to keep your tyres on the ground? Sometimes, bro. Monkey gums, yeah, it's got a bit of a reputation. Mate, the tracks are, it's as easy as hard as you want to make it. Pretty much from the get-go, it's a good few rock steps. There's a decent flex track about halfway down. If you've got an IFS truck, you'll be lifting wheels. Smith, the mighty Iveco. Yeah, nervous. How do I bring this forward? No, that's the that's seat heating. That's a weapon. <laughs> That's a weapon. <laughs> How does that feel? That is awesome. It's not hard to crawl, is it? No. This is why we run the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss. You can run them down at low pressure. That extra traction is what really pulls you up in these V-type washouts, and it just crawls through perfectly. We've got a much softer footprint, less damage to the environment, less work for the vehicle, happier all around. Bang, straight away. We've hit these rock steps, ledges, boulders, everything that this area is famous for. Not having done this before, it was good to watch Simon showing the right lines, where to go, what to look for. 
I felt a lot more confident when I was up. Just a matter of trusting sound, trusting the equipment and making sure you've got all the right gear. So guys, if you're going to come out and do these tracks, come with someone experienced, but you must do this. This is one of those absolute pinnacle trips. We've got great tracks in Victoria, but this is the one for my mind for New South Wales, the must do. What was going through my head is I picked the wrong line. I went too far to the right, got the right hand front wheel hung up and I couldn't turn the wheel at all. So I just dug the rear and dug a few holes and buried us. But uh, trusty winch gets us out of trouble. It's a very gnarly sort of track. Lots of different lines you can take, a lot of difficult lines as well. So we're going to test out the vehicles and our own skills and see what we can do. Try not to damage any vehicles, but we're going to have some fun. We've now reached the pinnacle of this track, according to our guide, Aaron, and this is the infamous AB point. There are a couple of different lines around this tree right here in the middle of the track, and there are some nasty, serious rocks in there. Now the Iveco is always up for a challenge, but I'll tell you what, there's one rock in there that looks too big for the Iveco. I still haven't made a decision, but let's see how we go. We literally spent the whole day on it. Wheels in the air pretty much, I reckon, 70, 80% of the time, getting over rocks, traversing through the canyons, helping other people on the tracks to try and get up the track. It was just sensational. All sorts of people came along on the trip, of course. There were some new people like Grant, who hasn't done much of his stuff before. But because of good spotting and good organisation, that car got to the top with no damage. And that was a stock standard three litre Hilux. That's incredible. Yep, keep coming on that, keep coming on that. First time I've been in this area of New South Wales. Mainly spent time in Victoria. Beautiful weather, nice time of the year. And it's also great to see these tracks are still open and so unspoiled. Nice and easy, nice and gentle, and right, turn right, touch it, drive straight up. Really, really big ruts, huge boulders. It was a bit of a wild ride in the cruiser that likes to lift wheels. 
couple of seat clenching moments there as I slid the back wheels into a rut, but a really, really fun day. Put a bit of pressure on it, having so many people standing around watching some of the tougher sections, but uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's hard to describe the Monkey Gun Fire Trail. It's just this traversing of rocks, canyons. It's one of those tracks, the only way I can describe it is something that you'd see a tough truck. Um, it just really was a rock crawling event. When you look at it, it looks absolutely impossible. As bold as as tall as I am. Keep going straight, keep going straight on it. A good spotter and an experienced operator. That's good. Start looking really carefully. Right, right, right. You can actually pick a line for this track. Simon and obviously all the offsiders were giving direction as to where to go, but Simon was on the CB telling you where to place your wheels, and thankfully he did. I thought I was going to maybe crush the back rear steps of this thing or even bow over the side steps. Go, 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 go. But with great guidance, with no scratches and no bumps, quite the accomplishment actually. That's how we do it. What's wrong with the fuel? Uh, split the line between the main tank and the sub tank. Little fuel filter broke, probably with all the flexing today. So we just plugged it up, straight up, straight up. taped it up as well. Should be right. We're going to fix it, get another fuel filter tomorrow. Right, that up. Right, that's good. Try on that. Okay. All right. Turn it right up here. Yep. Good one. There was three really difficult spots. There were many others, but there was three really, really difficult spots. Right, hard, right, hard, right. Straight up, straight up, straight up. There was a lot of rock steps, which we all had a bit of fun with. Under Simon's guidance, we all got the right line. Yeah, that's good. Keep going forward on that. The track itself is spectacular in so many, so many ways. Then we had a climb out, which was also a bit exciting. And a few other guys that haven't done much of that sort of stuff got a fair bit of experience out of it. Wasn't quite sure how, how the vehicle would, would hold up, but slippery. Man, it's no problem. The flocks made a great difference getting out. But I certainly wouldn't come out here as a first time on my own. We're having a blast. Epic spot. I kid you not, we've got a stock standard Mazda BT-50 up there without any damage to it. That is incredible. That's the reason we come out in the bush, just to explore the country without carrying on lycoons. We always say, look, there's no race. You know, there's none of that. Just take your time, don't muck around, just enjoy the bush. The more capable cars with lockers did it much more easily, but having said that, it's still an incredible challenge. I got through the day relatively unscathed, a couple of little scars on the bar work. Got through by the seat of my pants, I reckon. I don't think I could have done it if it wasn't for Alan Simon spotting me through, because all I could see from the driver's seat was bonnet. I had a cameraman go to me, hey, can you get your wheels on the ground? Getting over the top of it, getting your positioning right with your wheels. Once we got to the top of the track, there was an absolute feeling of elation. What an amazing run, eh? Everyone was just happy to have their car at the top of the hill. <laughs> now, the ladder of peril. And then the reward at the end, it was just amazing. There's a big flat rock at the top which you get to with a very rickety ladder. 
held together with cable ties, I'm told. If it holds me, it'll hold you. Got up to the top of the viewing platform and you look back out over what you've been climbing on all day. You can see forever. It's brilliant. I'm still, wow, what a great day. 22 years in the four-wheel drive game, this really was one of the top tracks that I've done in a long, long, long time. Just like you guys at home, there is nothing I love better than getting out on the tracks, meeting new people and sharing the amazing experience that four-wheel driving gives us. I just hope that we can get back to it sooner rather than later. The Monkey Gum Fire Trail is one of those must-do tracks. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to share it with you. Next week, we've got something very different and special. We're stuck in lockdown, but a few mates of mine up in Queensland head out on the tracks to make some noise, have some fun. It's going to be an epic adventure. Make sure you're watching. Are we reversing up this one? <laughs> This one here.